So it is officially fall here in Alabama, and that means it's time for salamanders. So it's November, and this is a beautiful example of a salamander you're going to find all throughout the southeast. This is the marbled salamander, and it is part of a group of salamanders called mole salamanders, and they're called that because they stay underground most of the year. Mm -hmm. But then when it's time to breed, which would be in November, December, January, even into February, they're going to come out from underground with a lot of cold, heavy rains, and they're going to breed in force. And you might see these guys this time of year crossing roads at night, especially if it's really rainy and cool. Or if you get into some swampy areas, uh, most notably you've got to be in places where you're not going to find fish. So any place where you're going to go bass fishing is not a good place to find these salamanders because their larvae are going to be preyed upon by most types of fish. So um, shallow swamps and marshes and uh, ephemeral pools and ponds, those are great places for these salamanders. But uh, they're really cool animals to go out and find and bring in during the, the winter time and, and just kind of observe and learn a little bit about their natural history. So uh, real quick, I'm just going to show you a, a real simple video on setting up a container to keep one of these guys and a little bit about how to take care of them and how to feed them. So um, I just have a plastic sweater box right here is all I really need. And what I'm going to do is just put some newspaper down in the bottom of it to hold a little bit of moisture and just going to spray that down. Pretty well. Uh, and that's just going to be the basis for the uh, cage as far as the substrate and what's going to hold moisture. Now I've got just a little plastic container here and inside of it is just some mulch. You, you could use peat moss or sphagnum moss or any kind of moss that's going to hold moisture. And that's going to provide a place for this little dude to crawl into and stay cool and moist. Because these guys are amphibians so they will be uh, have a risk of desiccation if, if they're not kept wet. And what I'm going to feed these guys are just earthworms. So it was kind of a rainy night tonight. So Hazel and I we went outside and we picked up a lot of worms, didn't we? We got us some worms. And we're just going to take those worms and I'm just going to dump them into this little uh, container that I made with this mulch in it. And so the worms are going to stay in there because that's where it's nice and moist. And the salamander will crawl in there and probably sleep at night and dig a little hole. And then he's probably also going to uh, eat those worms as he finds them in there. Um, So, only other thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of leaf litter to the container, and that'll help to hold moisture. That'll also help this guy to be able to crawl around the container and, and feel kind of safe. So, just got me some dead leaves, and I'm just throwing them in the bottom. Um, and this is just kind of a standard setup for any kind of uh, salamander that you might want to keep in your house. And um, any of them that you buy at the pet store or at a reptile show, and you want to keep them as a pet. Um, but anyway, so Hazel and I will probably hang on to this little dude for, for a few weeks just so that we can sort of observe him and, and then we're going to uh, return him back where we found him out in the woods uh, so that he is safe and sound there. So anyways, just a cool little animal, cool time of year. Fall is a great time to get out and just a lot of good bird watching to do in the fall and a lot of cool salamanders out. So uh, just one more reason, if you really like herps, you really like amphibians and reptiles, to uh, get outside and uh, have some fun.